It's Tuesday and I've already cracked out my Is It Friday Yet mug, so that might be a sign of how I think this week is going to go. I'm Sarah, and this is the Yarn Lab Canada podcast, uh, season one, which is Knitting for Twins, uh, episode number nine, uh, week 26. Um, just a little reminder, a recap, the reason I am calling this season one is because when the boys are born in June, there will be a definite uh, hiatus until a season two that will hopefully come out sometime later in the summer, because um, I just know that I will be entirely overwhelmed by babies to be worrying about putting together a weekly podcast. So season one is Knitting for Twins, um, expecting the arrival of my first babies, twin boys, in June. So first off, I'd like to thank any new viewers uh, and welcome them to my yarn lab. Um, hope you find something here that you enjoy and that you click subscribe and stick around. And of course, I'd like to thank all of my returning viewers um, for joining in with me each week, uh, either to my full-length podcasts or just uh, catching up on the shorter videos that I post throughout the week. Um, thanks a lot. It means a ton to me that I have people who are tuning in, people who are commenting. Um, I am really good, usually, about responding to all of my comments either here on YouTube or over on Ravelry, and we do have a Ravelry discussion group. Um, you can find it either by the link in the description below or just searching for Yarn Lab Canada in the uh, forums on Ravelry. And it really, I can't emphasize this enough, means a whole ton to me. This past week I had um, like a crazy long, exhausting day in the lab. Um, and being as pregnant as I am now, it was just, I was worn down by lunchtime. And I took a little break to sit down and check on my YouTube channel and found that I had had a new viewer who had watched most of my old videos and left a ton of lovely comments on them all. And you know, seeing those comments, whether you leave one on one video or you've left a whole bunch, those comments that day really gave me the energy I needed to get through the rest of the afternoon and made me just feel so happy and excited and uh, you know, just just saying, if you enjoy the video, if you, if I say something that makes you inspired to leave a comment, know that they are read and know that they absolutely make my day. So, there you go. Um, I hope you all had a uh, excellent Easter long weekend, uh, whether you celebrate or don't. Hopefully you had at least one day off this weekend to celebrate the springtime. Um, I spent my weekend down in Pincher Creek, Alberta, where Kevin is currently uh, stationed for this part of his residency. So that's like a small town in the foothills of southwestern Alberta. And we um, checked out Waterton National Park on Sunday, even though it was freezing and a lot of the park was still closed for the season. It was still really quite beautiful. We had a nice time. Um, and I saw a bighorn sheep, like really up close. So I'll put a picture of our sheep friend and a couple selfies and a picture of the lakes in Waterton uh, in here. So if you're interested, I know Waterton is accessible from uh, Alberta, but it's also pretty much right on the US border. And it's a great tourist hotspot um, for camping and outdoor activities in the summertime. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, if you're ever in this area of sort of Western, North, like Western Canada, Western, Northwestern US, definitely worth checking out. Uh, Kevin and I were both saying how we can't wait to one day be able to take the boys camping there. So really exciting. Um, I just wanted to give a quick thank you and shout out to Chanel of the Piper Nell podcast. And I will put um, in the doobly-doo below a link over to her podcast and a link to her group over on Ravelry. 
Um, she gave me a lovely shout out in her most recent video, uh, which was amazing. It's so exciting to get that little ear burn um, that you've been mentioned in a comment. And um, I was already subscribed to her channel. I think I, ah, I've, there's so many new podcasts that pop up, so I, I don't keep track of who was the one who recommended Piper Now podcast to me, but um, she's great. She's a physics um, university student who's almost graduating soon. She, uh, much like the Stress Knits podcast, films out of her dorm, which is kind of fun, and she's really just great. So thank you very much um, for giving me some love on your podcast. Uh, here sending some love back your way and uh, definitely recommend that you guys go check her out. She's relatively new, but she's fresh and worth it. Oh, and I just have to say, pregnancy gets me out of breath. So if you wonder why I'm like wheezing and like taking deep breaths on this podcast lately, I have found that the more pregnant I get, the faster I try and talk, the longer I try and talk, the more completely out of breath I feel. So I apologize for that. Uh, not that it's like apology worthy, but we're podcasters. We apologize, right? So, uh, and then speaking of that, um, I was kind of back and forth all day yesterday about whether or not I would actually sit down to film this podcast. Uh, I got back into town um, from Pincher Creek on Sunday evening and was planning on, uh, yesterday I had some blood work in the morning, but then I was planning on getting into the lab to do some experiments in the afternoon. But I was just completely worn down and exhausted from the weekend and spent most of the day in bed once I got home from my blood work. And so I was pretty low energy and was seriously contemplating not filming this morning. Um, quite a few other podcasters have taken this week off uh, due to Easter anyways. But uh, at the end of the day, I decided in favor of filming since I have a foe, I have a hoe, I have um, a couple whips that I'm excited about, and I have some stash enhancement that I'm really excited about. Um, so those things kind of gave me the excitement to actually turn the camera on. And then on top of that, there is a slight chance that I will not be filming next week. Uh, my mom is coming from Ontario to spend a week with me. She flies in tomorrow morning and I'm just not sure if I'll be sitting down to film while she's here. It might happen, it might not, but um, so I thought it was more important that I try and get this episode out this week. So really happy that I decided in favor of it. Um, you know, I, as pregnancy continues to sap my energy and uh, my required day-to-day -day activities, um, I kind of need to prioritize them over the knitting and over the podcasting. But uh, there's still been lots of knitting and I think that the payout, like I said, getting the, the comments and the discussion and the feedback, the payout sort of returns some of the energy from doing the podcast. So. I'm glad I decided in favor of it. And just one more quick thing. Uh, I just wanted to mention that there's still a couple days um, until April 1st. I'll close the thread at midnight um, to enter in my 500 subscriber giveaway. So the link to the Ravelry group uh, page for that giveaway is in the discussion below. Um, it's a small, relatively small number of people who have uh, signed up to win so your odds are probably you know maybe odds be ever in your favor the odds are in fact probably more in your favor for this giveaway than for others but um, you can join in to win a skein of my homespun yarn and a skein of my hand dyed yarn um, just by answering a simple prompt and telling me about your uh, most favorite or most proud fiber experiment um, and all of the details are in the description below for that. So please come on and uh, leave a comment and join the giveaway. It's been really fun and exciting reading some of the, uh, the comments that people have left so far. It's funny because all those giveaway threads, you're not allowed to do any chatter and the, the comments and replies that people post in them really make me wish that I could leave some chatter. So just a reminder, you have like two days left before April 1st. So join in on my 500 subscriber giveaway.
right, so do you want to jump right into FOs? And I'm wearing one. This is, of course, my um, draped jacket. The pattern is by Berger de France. The yarn is um, Loops and Threads Mirage in the silvery gray color and the black color. And I used about eight balls total, seven of the silvery gray and then one ball of the black for the sleeve cuffs. It's 100% acrylic. And it's one of those just lovely, lumpy, lovely, lumpy, cozy kind of sweaters. So just stand up and to give you the full effect. It's um, essentially a big rectangle with two small rectangles and uh, sleeve cuffs. And so it's a really great beginner sweater because there's not really any shaping. The seamings are straight seams and anybody could probably make it. Um, I haven't showed it in a work in progress because in a while because it's been sort of languishing and this week I picked up that project bag and said you are finishing this sweater this week. Um, so I did that. The pattern information is in the doobly-doo below. It is a free pattern. Um, I kind of wish I had altered it to put pockets in and I could probably do that sort of afterthought style just by, by snipping a yarn, unraveling, and then knit down a pocket. But um, it's, it's really great. I've been wearing it since I finished it yesterday and it's just really cozy. It's like the ultimate pregnancy hug sweater because there's just so much drapey room in it. Uh, enough to cover the big belly. <laughs> but yeah, so I just wanted a quick, easy, sort of slouchy sweater. I feel like it would go perfect with a slouchy hat. Um, as for adaptations to the pattern, it comes in two sizes because it is quite oversized. Um, you know, clearly there's no, there's room for all sorts of, of people and lumps and bumps and whatever you have in here. So even though I knit the smaller size, um, it's, it's as close to a one size fits all kind of pattern as you can really get. But as far as alterations, I decided to do an I-cord edging along the front panels rather than come back in after and knit a ribbed edging. Um, it does cause a little bit of rolling in on the front, but I'm okay with that. And although I did steam block the pieces to make sure that the bottom hem would lay flatter, I didn't worry about trying to steam block the roll out because I was okay with the way it was rolling. The other alteration to the pattern that I made was um, for the sleeve cuffs, they wanted you to knit them flat and separate and then seam them closed and then seam them onto the sweater. And I said, I ain't got time or desire to do that. So I just picked up, I did the shoulder sleeve, the shoulder seam and the side seam. And then I picked up stitches all the way around and knit in the round the uh, sleeve cuffs. And I actually knit my very first magic loop on these sleeve cuffs because I pulled out DPNs um, and you needed uh, 5.5 millimeter needles for them. And I pulled out my DPNs from my big drawer of needles, which I should show you guys sometime. And I only had three 5.5 DPNs. So I don't know what that's gonna be useful for. Um, most of my knitting needles are inherited from my grandma and you know, things get lost along the way sometimes. So turns out didn't have enough DPNs to work in the round. So I said, you know what? You're smart enough to figure out magic loop. And I magic looped it and it was fine. It was a little bit annoying. It was my first magic loop project. And to be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of fiddling the cable through every time you needed to switch needles, but it worked fine. Um, I don't have any ladders because I didn't. So I just figured out Magic Loop from having seen people do Magic Loop on podcasts and being kind of intuitive about the way the needle should loop around. So I didn't do exactly half the stitches on the front and half the stitches on the back needle. Each time I pulled the needles through, I pulled about two thirds of the stitches around. And so you don't get any ladders because that, that seam you know, between the front and the back needle rotates around the sleeve. So, 
overall it looks pretty good. Plus, I mean, it's a thick and thick worsted weight yarn, so um, it's not like the most even fabric to beginning to begin with because of the thick and thickness of it. So, yeah, I'm really happy with my draped jacket. It's really cozy um, and soft and fuzzy. I think that the acrylic looks much better. Like now that all of the seams are done and all of the hanging ends are gone. It looks, you know, pretty classy for an acrylic sweater and I think it only cost me like 14 bucks to knit up because the yarn was on sale for like $1.99. So yeah, like $16, like less than $20 with the yarn for a great cozy, um, bulky, lumpy, awesome kind of sweater. So really happy with this FO. Um, I'm going to have to take some more pictures of it and put uh, update the project page. This project page has no pictures currently. Um, and I'm also going to enter it into, I think the Knitting Expat podcast has a year-long sweater cal. So this will be my first sweater of 2016. First adult size sweater, I should dis disclaimer that. Um, and hopefully not my last. But that's it for foes, because like I said, this week I banged out a full sweater front and then the two sleeve cuffs. Um, so it did eat up a lot of my knitting time, but I'm really glad to have a languishing uh, FO, a languishing whip turn into an FO. Um, if I hadn't repicked it up soon, there would have been a good risk that it stayed in a project bag for like a year or something. Especially as the weather gets warmer. Um, and I probably will just wear it as a jacket um, over the next couple weeks, because it's like that great time of spring where a sweater is a jacket, essentially. Right. Uh, I have a hoe! So this is halfway between an FO and a whip, right? And that is, I finished a sock. This is my uh, first ever pair of socks. Um, they're knit in Manos uh, del Uruguay Alegria in a hand-painted, very bright colorway. Um, this is the toe up short rows, toe and heel sock recipe from Knitty Magazine. All of the information, of course, is in the description below. Um, knit on US size 1 DPNs and with, I think I have 64 stitches around, which it fits. It's a little bit loose. I'm going to go down to a smaller number for my next pair for sure, but I'm really excited about it. And I did do just a very short um, sock top before doing the ribbing and finishing off. I also did my very first um, someone's surprisingly stretchy bind off and it worked great and was easy to do so I followed that up and used it as the bind off on my one by one ribbing for my sweater. Um, so yeah, I have a hoe guys. And this hoe is a reminder that I am running a knit along. It is the Sock Virgin Cal. Um, information is all in the doobly-doo below. If you are like me and you're knitting your first pair of socks um, and you finish them before April 1st, you can enter them for a chance to win some prizes. And I haven't announced those prizes yet. I've got a couple set aside. Um, if any makers out there are interested in donating anything, uh, please give me a um, PM on Ravelry. But otherwise, uh, tell a friend. This is a great chance to knit your first pair of socks, a little incentive to get over the hump. And to avoid second sock syndrome, I have cast on and started sock number two. Um, so I just have the toe here. That's just, I store my fifth DPN, poke through the sock. And I've just done about an inch and a half past the toe. But um, this is really great waiting and purse knitting. So I have that with me and hopefully by next week we might be at the heel turn again. And this is just in um, the little Minnesota bag that I got from uh, Cheryl in my expat knitting, um, the expat yarn swap. I showed that to you guys I think last week. So this is the bag that the yarn came in. And it's just a little drawstring bag that is good for holding a ball of yarn and a pair of socks. Um, it's not super great because it wants to shed little bits of string into your project, but yeah, 
it keeps my DPNs from getting lost and broken in my purse, right? So, that's my hoe. Now, I'm only going to show you um, two whips. I have been working on my secret design project for that rainbow um, of Karen Simply Soft yarn. I am now through the red and the orange section of the rainbow. I'm trying to knit one color each week. So hopefully we'll be seeing a finished project sometime in about a month and a pattern release shortly thereafter. But I did have um, some exciting work in progress to show you. And first up is my exploration station. So this guy sat on the shelf for a week last week and then I picked it up this past weekend and really quickly banged out all of section three and most of section four. Um, this is of course the Stephen West exploration station pattern. Um, it's being knit for Eric from the Sticks Plus Twine podcast knit along. Um, I was for the first two sections keeping on track with the schedule. He was sort of opening threads for each subsequent section but he's been on vacation and that's kind of fallen behind so I've decided I'm just gonna bang it out and finish it hopefully by this time next week. And this is of course made with my homespun yarn so Last time I showed it to you, I just finished the brioche section. I've now finished the slip stitch section. And I'm on to section four, which is uh, like straight knitting. Um, and it's going to be huge. Like, look at the length. Like, this is the, the middle of the neck. And this is how long it is already. So this is going to be really quite huge. Um, it's homespun, hand dyed by yours truly yarn. I think that it's reminiscent of like Hubba Bubba Gum. So that's kind of fun and exciting. And I'm getting very close to being done. Uh, like I said, section four is almost complete. And then section five is just the lace border. And I spun myself an extra 50 yards of each color. I'm really glad I did because I ended up having to go up a needle size. Um, to get a fabric that I liked and this is all that I have left now that I finished with the dark pink. This is definitely not 50 yards so really glad that I gave myself breathing room on this one. Hopefully next time you see that shawl it will be done. Um, yeah and then the next work in projects next work in progress is one that I cast on this week and it is the Millie Tank Top round two. So if you've been watching, and I will stick a picture in here, um, you know that I knit uh, Millie Tank Top in blue and white for twin A or twin B. Um, they haven't been assigned yet. So I'm knitting a second one in green and white, and I finished the back piece. So this is the back. It's Fair Isle style. Look at all those lovely carries. It's really sweet and cute. I have the front piece just cast on and the first couple rows of the pattern, the chart done. I'm knitting on straight needles, which I really like for piecework um, color work because I find that for me it helps to keep your carries and your tension uh, nice and even. And it's knit in some green and some uh, natural Cascade 220 Sport. I was originally going to knit it in green and grey and I did cast on and knit a couple rows of the chart in green and grey but the contrast between these two colours wasn't enough so I had to go back into my yarn shop and pick up another skein of the off-white um, for Millie Tank Top number two. So the pattern information is in the description below. Uh, it is a free pattern. I had commented before, I don't know why it's called a tank top, it's a vest. And then, oddly enough, if you watch the Sockmetician podcast, um, he mentioned this past week on this past episode that in the UK, they call a vest a tank top. So that is why it's called a tank top. Which is, to me, ridiculous because, you know, the way that North Americans use tank top and vest, they're not even remotely comparable. Um, but in the UK, it's tank top. So my little boys will be wearing matching British tank tops, I guess. 
but it's a quick knit. Um, this, you know, only took about an evening's worth of knitting, so by next week that will be done as well. Um, the first one is entered in my local yarn shop's monthly knit along. Um, they're doing a technique based knit along and this month, uh, March was Fair Isle, so the first finished object is entered there. And then Shannon from the Sock Setterer podcast has a colorwork cal going on that closes on April 6th, I believe. And I want to be able to put the pair of them into that podcast. So that gives me a deadline to finish uh, that little sweater vest. Um, and that's all the whips I'm going to show you. Which brings me on to stash enhancement slash um, what's next on my needles. So, last week, um, I think it might have been Wednesday or Thursday, I went into um, the loop in Kensington intending to only buy a skein of, you know, like a $6 skein of Cascade 220 Sport in the natural color. And I did buy this, but what they do when they get orders in is it all goes on the, the table at the front of the store for them to, to label an inventory before it gets put away on shelves. So like nine times out of ten when you walk in there, there's something super exciting and beautiful and gorgeous on that front table. And I, I'm a knitter. I don't have good restraint when it comes to super exciting, gorgeous new yarn. So they had all of these gradient packs. Um, these are hand dyed um, in Canada. I'm not sure where. I will put the um, website for the dyer in the description below. But this is Julie Azalin's yarn. I'm assuming maybe Quebec because the labeling is in French, but it does say um, Canada on it. But I picked up this beautiful gradient um, in fingering weight and it's superwash merino 100% oh no 90% superwash merino 10% whatever S-O-I-E so maybe silk might be 10% silk like I said labels in French um, and there are about 500 meters total uh, across the gradient and I picked it up and I do have a project in mind but this will probably not be cast on for quite a while yet. But it was on the front table and it was gorgeous. They had all the different color gradients. I was sorely tempted to do like a blue teal kind of one. But I need to be pushing um, into different colors I think. So I really like this sort of plum purple gradient. And it's super squishy soft wonderful yarn. Yeah, I think it might be 10% silk. S-O-I-E in French. I will um, link that yarn up in the description below with the actual details. But that was an impulse buy that could not be helped, I swear. Um, then the lovely Mr. Canada Post came and he delivered to me an order from uh, Hugh Loco. And that is two skeins of her tweed sock. Um, Hugh Logo, so that's Nicole, she has a podcast, all of the description in the, all of the info in the descriptions below, has some really great yarns, and I think more importantly has some really great uh, semi-solids or tonals. I get really excited by all of the hand-painted um, indie dyed yarn, but it's a little harder to imagine how those are going to work up into projects, because um, sometimes this, the pooling that you get is bad news bears but these are just beautiful so they're tweed sock um, they are 85% superwash merino 15% nylon in the mineral that's the blue and the mint colorway um, I actually had messaged Nicole so mineral was a color that she'd done before and I asked her what the likelihood of there ever being a tweed version of mint, which is a colorway she did on other bases. And lo and behold, there was mint in the next shop update. And these are going to be a pair of 
tin can knits playdate sweaters for my boys because one of Nicole's sample knitters, she's been having people knit um, samples for, um, oh I can't find words right now, for when she does trunk shows. She's been having people knit samples for trunk shows for her and a lovely knitter knit a playdate baby cardigan in the mineral tweed and it was so adorable that I immediately contacted her about doing a set for my twins. I mean, I'm gonna knit it, but I wanted the colors from Nicole, so. These will be, in the near future, turned into tiny, adorable little cardigans. And then while I was at it, Mommy decided that why should the boys get all the fun, and I bought a skein for myself. And this is on her Phyllis sock base which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, fingering weight of course, in the glow stick colorway. So it is um, kind of on the natural base, although the, the pink sort of gives everything a bit of a pinky kind of tone, but with hits of neon yellow and bright green and pink and some black. Um, so it's kind of like my first speckly um, type of yarn. And it's going to be paired with Edison Bulb. Um, and if you guys have ever watched some of Stephen West's old videos, I mean, when he sings his ode to Edison Bulb, it's so good. Um, I might insert a tiny clip of that here. Edison, 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 Edison Bulb. You light up my life, you are so bright. But yeah, so Madeline Tosh Edison Bulb on Tosh Sock, um, which is of course 100% uh, superwash merino. And these two are going to be paired together for a very bright and vibrant um, Cameo Loco Cal. So it's the Cameo pattern, information below, knit in Hue Loco yarn. Um, for a knit along that is being hosted by Get Lit and Knit, along with Franco Fee Knits, uh, which are two excellent podcasts that I highly recommend you check out. And the cast on date is April 1st. So as soon as I get my exploration station off the needles, and I do also need to get my three color cashmere cowl off the needles, but exploration station first, and then I might let myself cake this up to cast on for that knit along, since it looks like a really fun, exciting shawl. Then, one more little stash enhancement while I'm at it. Um, last week I showed you the um, Waves of Superior DK yarn that uh, Cheryl sent me in my Knitting x pack swap, uh, yarn swap, and I picked up a skein of Madeline Tosh DK um, this is the the Greco colorway, so it's just a dark um, tonal gray-black colorway to pair with my Waves of Superior so that I can stretch out um, how much I get out of this. And I have an idea to do a pair of Fair Isle hats. I don't know if the pattern motif, motif rather that I have in my head exists already. If it doesn't, I will chart it up and knit it myself. But hopefully I'll be able to get two baby hats and one adult hat out of this amount of yarn. That's the plan. Because I'd love to be able to match my boys, although that might leave Kevin out. Maybe I need to make maybe I need to make an order for an extra skein of this and make one for him too. Although I don't think he would wear the hat that I'm thinking of. But I just wanted to show you that I stash enhanced another skein of Madeline Tosh. And then last but very not least, the next thing that's going to be up on my needles is a Charizard. Um, I wish I had grabbed my Blastoise off the shelf. I'll be right back and I'm going to do that. Whew. Hard to move out of breath. So I showed this guy to you guys a couple weeks ago. He is my Blastoise um, crocheted uh, from acrylic for the boys. The pattern is by Edward Young. Um, I've also purchased his Charizard pattern 
and I'm going to be starting this this next week because April 1st is the cast on date for Legacy Knits podcast Stuffy Along. So Charizard is going to be my stuffy for that stuffy along. And I have all of the yarn for that. I've shown it to you in previous episodes as well. And that's it. That's all. Um, maybe this was quick. I have no sense of how much time has elapsed since I started filming. But if you've made it to the end, thank you so very much for sticking with me. Um, and that's all for now guys. Uh, happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy spinning, happy experimenting with fiber however you choose to. Um, I'm Sarah and this has been my yarn lab. <laughs>